for those of you who aren't as familiar with, um, with the Somali region, uh, as you can see from this map, there's many different governments or public authorities or extra legal authorities that are controlling the region of the Somali region. And for a company like Davishil, I think this poses very interesting questions about how do you operate in such an environment. So Abdi Rashid comes from Somali land where there is a functioning government. It's not internationally recognized, but they do hold regular elections, including recently, just a couple of years ago, democratic elections where the opposition party came to power. They issue passports, there's currency there, and it's relatively stable, it's quite stable. Um, there's also Puntland territory, which is another region and another government that aspires to be part of the federalist Somalia, but is not seeking international recognition as Somali land, but there's another set of authorities for a company like Dabashil to deal with. Um, and then in the south, you have, everyone has probably heard of Al-Shabaab. Um, Dabashil has managed to, to, to operate in areas that have been controlled by Al-Shabaab, as well as by the transitional federal government. And just over lunch today, Abdi Rashid was saying that now in Kisimayu, there is a new government, um, the Jubaland government. So in the last two weeks, a new, um, a new government has claimed parts of Kisimayu and saying that they're not recognizing the TFG. So this is an extraordinarily complex environment in which one, in which a business and a company operates. And I think what we'll be talking a little bit about today is how does innovation thrive in such an environment? So how does the Somali territories, they now have 10 mobile phone companies. How did this come about and why? And so now I'll turn it over to Abdi Rashid and um, who wants to start, I think, with the video. Yes, thank you very much. And, um, and we can continue the discussion. Yeah. Should be on. You can just play the. Okay. All right. Sh sh uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for all coming. Um, I'm more than happy to be interactive and answer any questions. I don't claim to be any expert here. Uh, so let's first watch the video and then we start the presentation as we go along. Should we going? <laughs> <laughs> Somalia has been in a state of conflict since the late 1980s. Although things have recently become more peaceful, instability continues in some parts of the country. This has resulted in the displacement of close to half of the entire Somali population, who have been scattered to all corners of the globe. With the absence of a central government, the state has been unable to provide essential services such as banking. Companies such as Dahabshil bridge the gap by providing remittance and telecommunication services. It serves individuals, businesses and international humanitarian agencies operating in Somalia. Somalia was in the world spotlight two years ago when famine struck following the worst drought of East Africa in 60 years. Somalis all over the world raised millions of dollars to help their relatives and friends back home. Much of the money was sent via the Hapshill, which also contributed desperately needed funds as part of its corporate social responsibility program. Uh, we couldn't operate at all without uh, a company like Dabshil. It's important because our, our main office in Nairobi has to transfer something like $50,000 and it's done in less than one hour and we can pick it up as you can see very quickly with no problem. Bakara Market is the economic heartbeat of Mogadishu. This market is the center of telecommunications, money remittances and foreign exchange. Despite the long years of civil war, this market and others in different parts of the territory, such as Hargeza and Bosaso, have always played a vital role. In spite of the difficulties, entrepreneurs have continued to spot opportunities to do business. The real estate industry, for example, is booming with heavy investment in both residential and commercial buildings. Private telecommunication investors are laying cables along the streets. The Dahabshil Group has embraced technology. It operates in all parts of the Somali territories, crossing clan and regional lines. It has a presence in 150 countries, serving Somalis and non-Somalis alike. 
the Hapshin and its clients rely heavily on technology, including mobile phones and the internet. Abdel Rashid Duale is from Somalia. He is CEO of Dahabshil, which is one of the continent's most successful international money transfer company. Abdel Rashid, so um, talking there about the role of technology uh, helping Africans today in their various activities, you run an international money transfer company which very much relies on technology for people to send their remittances. Of course, some, some, I would not say all our customers are familiar with technology, but because we work in 155 countries, we experience different customers, and, and that technology makes it easier for us, whether it's through online or whether sharing the data with them through the mobile. You know, if you use our service, you will receive SMS from us, say, you know, the money has been delivered in a remote area, whether it's Somalia or Sudan or, or Uganda or any, any part in Africa. So yes, technology is a crucial to our, our business, and every day we're trying to improve. The Dahabshil Group has a wide range of financial services. These include Dahabshil Bank International based in Djibouti and all the Somali territories, Somtel, a telecommunications company, and the e-card and the e-cash, the first ever debit card in the Somali territories. It can be used in many places including hotels, restaurants, supermarkets and fuel stations. Somtel has made it possible to connect the Somali regions to the rest of the world. Somtel provides a high-speed internet service, very affordable domestic and international phone rates and mobile telephone services via wireless internet technology. The availability of an internet service has made access to essentials such as education and information more convenient and hassle-free. I'm a nomad. I follow the world and I take advantage of the communication systems, a modern communication system. I use the internet, I learn the English language, I learn the maths. I used to go to the local school. But then the school I go to now is very far, and instead of that, I take advantage of the internet, and that's how I educate myself. The World Health Organization estimates the Somali's health indicators to be the worst in the world. Somtel Mobile Service has enabled medical personnel to carry out consultation remotely, and this has resulted in saving lives. Dr. Adna Adan, a midwife trainer and director of the Adna Maternity Hospital, explains. A Nasai trained had to deal with difficult labor. The baby was experiencing fetal distress and was stuck. The nurse called me in a panic and I directed her step by step over the phone until the safe delivery of the baby boy. By continually innovating and adapting to difficult situations, the Hapshil has been at the forefront of technological change. Few would believe that such things could be happening amongst Somalis. Despite or perhaps because of the challenges they face, they have been quick to embrace the latest technology and are constantly coming up with new innovations according to their needs. So far, regulations have not stifled this advancement. Thank you very much. I hope that was useful. Um, uh, I, I would like to add a, a, uh, other further presentations, but I, I hope I will not uh, repeat what you have already heard through the video. So I'll try to summarize as much as I can. It's all yours. And how shall you do it? Um, <coughs> I guess if we just click it. Right. Um, as you may already know, uh, the news that normally you hear from Somalia or Somali territory, and I want to use this word for Somali territory for for special reason because everything is so divided in the territory. <laughs> and I want to be neutral here. And, uh, and, uh, and I will use Somali territory. But you might already know Somalia as a, as a country. So Somalia, normally you hear, uh, and I don't want to repeat you know, what you normally read, war, famine, 
uh, terrorism, pirates, uh, and it's a fact, even though it's getting less now, less pirates, less terrorism, less, but it's a fact of life in certain part of the Somali territory. Uh, so that's the normal, I believe, that was normally people here. But I think a lot of international community, they are not aware of how Somalis are using technology, how they are innovating, how uh, in certain ways that um, a lot of technology that exists in certain parts of Somali territory, um, um, I might say, are not available in certain part of the world, especially I know the region, which I will talk about shortly. I thought this picture you might like. <laughs> because camels are well known with Somalis. Still, camel is part of our Somali life. Uh, and people Somali in so many different ways. But here you see the camel being uh, at, uh, connected to solar system, to, uh, to power freakies. Uh, and again, what Somalis are good at is to get the solar system. <laughs> we have a lot of sun there. So for us to utilize in this way, I think it's a very in innovative way. Uh, and it's not only the use of fridges, they are also using to empower the technology, whether it's a mobile or whether it's other electricity power that Somalis need. So these are another examples of how Somalis are innovative. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Nicole, can come in here, anything I want. <laughs> you want me to expand, yeah? Here, uh, because the power is so limited, because uh, you won't get power so easily as you might get in Oxford. Here, they mixed uh, the charcoal, which is easily available in the certain Somali territory, to get good coffee espresso. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the Somali becoming innovative here uh, to keep the traditional way of using charcoal, but at the same time mixing with, with technology. Right. Here, this is where I try to pretend to be a little bit historian. <laughs> Before the state clubs in 1991, everything was run by the government. Everything, 100%. There was no innovative way to run anything, highly regulated, uh, and, and everything was limited. You know, to call overseas calls, you have to go certain locations to make an outside call. To receive letters was, you know, you have to go certain like you know the college here where you get all the documents in the receptions. It was that kind of style in the Somali territory before 1991 when the state collapsed. Uh, and of course the Habshil also was a small company then. Uh, my father established the company in 1970. He's still active, but at that time we were uh, very limited, you know, in certain uh, the service we offer. And I will talk about how technology helped us to expand after the state collapse. Um, of course, a lot of people died. A lot of people became injured, and a lot of people, f you know, uh, run away from the country. They become refugees. They, you know, everything collapsed. Uh, that's the sad part of it. But again, also that give us as a Somalis to innovate again, to start from bottom up, uh, more or less with no state monitoring and stopping the development. So everybody has to do what they have to do. And, 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 and also, you know, the regulation disappear. In many ways, regulations, you know, in I think a lot of African states, it's obstacle to development. And, uh, and that actually, in, in a way, uh, encourage entrepreneurship and be able to be creative and, and more or less to do what they can. And, uh, and, and, and companies like the Hapshi also play part by, you know, offering a lot of internet services and communication service from early on. <coughs> um, the civil war started in 1988, even though the state collapsed in 1991, uh, and especially where I lived at that time with my family, Buro, which all of us, we fled the country, we started a new life in Ethiopia, uh, and, uh, and a lot of Somalis also, you know, either went to Ethiopia or Kenya or other part of the neighbor's country, and, and, and some of them came to the UK and other parts of the world. Um, so that's a little bit of background. Of course, um, I talked about earlier of how the, at that time the communication was, you know. I don't know whether you remember the old tape of messages. Normally here you listen songs and other things. 
but in the Somali territory was the way of communications. Recording message has to be delivered with letters, and, and we have to deliver that by hand with the cash. Uh, at that time, how the things were. Now, now we talk about how now everything's automated and, and things are more much better than it was. Um, global presence, I want to do a lot of talk about the Habshil here. Uh, we work with United Nations and other agencies that operate in the regions. Uh, we now have our own bank in Djibouti and the Somali territory offering a lot of banking service. And of course, SOMTA, which I also talk about later, offering some of the latest technology. Um, to innovate in that environment where I talk about letters, recording messages, tapes, HF radio, I'm sure you are familiar with HF radio, it's basically walkie-talkie. Everybody could hear your conversations. Uh, to come from that angle to aware now uh, it's so automated to send money online, to mobile, to uh, automated messages. It is an extremely different world coming from that angle and how it, it, you know, it, it helps uh, uh, with, with, a, with so many different fronts, whether it's health issues, or whether it's education that you saw the video. Uh, it, it is a dramatical, really, uh, how the charity change from that part to where it is now. Um, I, I mentioned earlier there was only one company before 19, 1991. That company was owned by the government, state-owned company, and the service was limited. Now you have, I think, up to uh, a private company that offer one way or another data service, voice service, up to 30 company. If you compare that with Ethiopia and Djibouti, where still only one state company exists. I was recently in Djibouti, where I have to get a, 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 a SIM card uh, I obviously have to go to the main center. And in the Somali territory, you can get so many cards, so many numbers. Uh, uh, and of course, we work with international partners who help us with this, whether it's a Norwegian company or Dutch company or British company who are offering their satellite services. And, and, and now, nowadays, it's Chinese company actually <laughs> who are so active in that part of the world. Uh, and there's also other uh, televisions and radios and, 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 and you know, media are also you know, revolutionized in using the latest technology. Can I ask a question then about the SIM cards? Yeah. Because if there's no government that's really regulating the use of these SIM cards, are there difficulties in terms of different phone companies having access to the same lines? So I know that many people have to have multiple SIM cards. How do you handle this and is there any effort on the part of any authorities to try and regulate this? Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, actually, I think maybe it's a second slide where I okay. will be talking about that. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, okay, no, maybe uh, it's <laughs> a further down. <laughs> but okay. I, I, I will try. Yes, there's a lot of, um, uh, I think the disadvantage of ha not having a strong regulator is, is that where every company wants to do whatever they want. Uh, and if anything, that's where I think we miss the regulations. Uh, because the regulations, the one determined that the companies communicate each other, they talk to each other, uh, and that interconnection is missing. But again, to be innovative, is that a lot of Somalis, they use phone with two SIM cards, like mine here. So that, you know, still you can use the boat company here, you know. Uh, and, and I don't think this is widely used in the UK. You know, it's widely being used in that part of the world. Uh, so yes, uh, that's a challenge to still remain. Uh, you will have to get a license from different authority, uh, whether in Mogadishu or whether in Hargeisa or whether in Bosaso or Garoe. Uh, again, you might have to get even two licenses to operate in certain places. So maybe things could be double, <laughs> yes. But again, I think you have to be innovative and still the business exists, how Somalis go about their life. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to jump to your slides, though. <laughs> well, now we must no, please come in, because I want to be useful here. Um, now, uh, uh, the, I talk about innovations, and, and I, I would like to mention that some of you are familiar, of course, with the technology now nowadays we are going to. GSM, 3G, now 4G, uh, all the latest technology on mobile, basically offering all kinds of products. Uh, using you know picture on your on your phone and getting access to and 
and be you know talk to your families. So that's uh, are available in in certain part of Somali territory. Um, so you know that's that's what I want to highlight. Um, <coughs> uh, mobile subscriptions in uh, I estimate there to be up to two million and a half you know numbers um, and, and, and many of them are family shared together uh, because in many ways uh, Somali culture is the families you know helping one another you know talking to each other sending money one another helping it's many ways is the, is the, is the, is the how Somali society operates so uh, these numbers we might give you idea do um, do more Somali families have mobiles than they do landlines in their house? Like we would have a landline. Absolutely, Everything yes. Everything runs okay. on mobile. Actually, um, uh, because when I you know I knew that I'll, I'll be I, I'll be speaking to you guys here, I, I asked them that questions, and the landline actually people are taken out of their home. They want to be on mobile, uh, and landline I think it is. I asked a friend of mine. I said, can you estimate? the numbers and say the maximum maximum of the entire country is 100,000 landline. They don't want to have a landline. Everyone wants to have a mobile, latest one, iPhone, Samsung, you name it, all kind of 3G, 4G, 5G. <laughs> they want to have the latest product. Yeah, and, and so, so the mobile system is really the one they are, they, they, they are keen on. And can you say something about the cost of that then? Because I think this is quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, to buy a mobile, and the cost of the the phone calls, yeah, is comparatively exactly. low. It's extremely low. Yes, um, to make uh, one dollar, I think you can you can have up to uh, fifteen minutes to make international calls, mm -hmm. um, and also um, <coughs> uh, local calls, which is where I think a lot of companies make money out of it. It's the local calls within the country. It's hundreds of minutes. I think probably minimum 200 minutes a, a, a dollar uh, and and also you know for them to have a communication with their family in the diaspora what they do is that they, they will buy a UK number or US number so while you're in Hargeza you will have a UK number so that if you call me <laughs> uh, I'm sure some of you call me <laughs> you, you 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 will call me the UK number or Norwegian number Zero zero five four seven. <coughs> so that it encourages people to talk to one another and to save money and yeah, go ahead. I would like to ask you, do you have a standardized currency for all the Somalian territories or a universal currency for people in all these territories to do business? Good, very good. Uh, well, I think uh, US dollar is in a way become uh, practically the currency that the country uses. Uh, of course, you have a, in Somaliland, you have a Somaliland shilling. In Somalia, you have all Somalia shilling, like before the state collapsed. Uh, uh, and so, yes, uh, but not only US dollars, they use uh, UAE currency, you know, other Arab Middle East currency, European Union currency. So, widely available currency, yes. So, is that a, like a, a locked currency in exchange rate because all these territory uprising every single day? Tomorrow may have a new territory coming up. Any centralized regulations so that this way you have a more stabilized market if you do the exchange or market <coughs> uh, communications or business? In a way, everything is run by market. There's no uh, uh, as such as you mentioned. But for example, recently, I don't know whether you have been following the news, the Somali currency is getting stronger where um, the, you know, because of the stability that's, uh, that now, uh, in the southern Somalia especially, in the security improvement, the national currency is getting stronger. And, but somehow, still all the goods and the, the things that have been bought from outside, be bought in U.S. dollar, uh, the no saver has been made because everything is somehow connected <coughs> with the U.S. currency. So even though the national currency becomes stronger, in a way it's not economically beneficial to to the, the ordinary Somalis. Uh, if I, uh, am I making sense there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we'll, we'll keep going. Um, this is some of the service that SOMTEL offer. Um, video conferencing, video calling, live streaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is some of the service. I'm sure if you come to Somaliland, we will sell to you some of these products. <laughs> 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 right. Um, can I ask about, um, about intellectual property rights for software? 
Maybe we should stick with the, the this theme, and then afterwards we can have some other questions as well. Yeah, we can continue minutes. with the presentation. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. This uh, I I love this picture. I want to share with you two ladies. Uh, obviously with the traditional clothes uh, and I'm sure they're chatting on Facebook and Skype and Twitter inside the territory. So uh, in many ways um, it highlighted how technology is a, it's not a barrier to, to those who want to use it. Regulations. Uh, for our money transfer we have to of course regulate wherever we operate, whether it's outside the country as well as inside the country. Uh, we are a member of a lot of associations to to maintain our regulation compliant. Uh, and if I talk about the country inside, uh, as I said earlier, we have to get a license from Mogadishu, we have to get a license from Somaliland, we have to get a license from Puntland for money transfer as well as telecommunications. Uh, and, and we also have to work telecom associations uh, to you know, you know, manage uh, frequency, numbers, and, uh, and some of these disputes if it ever arise. So those uh, are there. Uh, I have to highlight a lot of issues can be solved through community leaders. So everything has not go through court and, and others. Uh, uh, that's where traditional system is useful here if any disputes uh, arise. So Abdi, when you say telecom as associations, is yes. that, are, you, are you talking about the telecom companies cre as at, so, um, creating an association between themselves? Is that what you're saying? The Absolutely, yes. Yeah, okay. yes. There's a, a lot of telecom associations where uh, the telecom companies <coughs> set up uh, and also working with international uh, union like uh, International Telecommunication Union and others, well, well, very working with them it is where uh, they are useful when it comes to. Because certain things you have to work with others, mm -hmm. otherwise there will be a crisis. And, and, and uh, <coughs> I, I, I wanted to share with you this phone, this picture. Uh, this is one of the latest pictures. Uh, uh, hello. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> uh, it is one of the, uh, uh, basically, with the phone. You remember earlier the video, Edna, talking about helping a, 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 a woman who was uh, given a birth to uh, And this technology, we think, will help Edna for the future. This is where this phone will scan the heartbeat. It will. You know, talk about blood pressure, I will help the blood pressure, will help so many things. So, we have not introduced it yet, but we believe this kind of technology is the way Somalis are heading to. Uh, remotely, those who are in the ruler could get <coughs> this kind of technology, uh, and if there is a doctor on the other side, they could help. So, there's a lot of um, uh, 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 investment needs, of course, uh, ultimately you need doctors and others who will help the other side. But we believe this kind of phone will, uh, will help in terms of health improvements and others. Uh, in summary, uh, uh, I, I hope my presentation and my video show that uh, whenever we hear about Somali story, that the Somalis were helping themselves. They're utilizing technology in so many different ways. Uh, they're investing money. They are uh, creating jobs. And, and they are helping themselves. I hope that is, is, is the message you got from me here. And second, uh, that the, the regulation that it used to exist before the state collapse uh, was inhibiting innovations and technology and, and, and everything I talk about it. And, and light regulations <coughs> is still essential, otherwise there will be more crisis to come. Uh, and, and perhaps she will ask, you know, take the role that we mentioned. Still we believe we can do a lot. Can, uh, technology is a long way to go for us. I hope also you will understand each of the, the, some of this technology, like Mbessa coming from Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's not about the West technology going back to Africa. It's somehow technology African helping themselves. Uh, 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 and mixing both in a way, learning the best that exists within Africa or other parts of the world. So that's where I want to end, and I will ask, I will answer any question you may have.